Hey friends, happy Monday night. Tonight we're gonna to be featuring what I consider, maybe you have a different title, but it's, I call it a gardening toolbox. I'm not sure what else I would use it for. I say gardening because it's a little fancy just for a toolbox. I don't really know how old it is. It's kind of cool that someone stamped their initials on the side. So I'm guessing it's somewhat handmade. And um, I've got it on these little painters triangles just because I'd also painted the bottom and I'd like to not put it on my rough table surface. But this is our project tonight. So I hope you stick around and see it to the finish. So this is the before photo. As you can see, it's just an old box. I, I did tape the handle with painter's tape because I'd like to preserve some of the original wood color. So that's um, on there. Tonight, you can already see that I've done a little prep work on it. The main thing that I've done is I painted it and you can see on the inside, gray boss, my favorite boss if you, if you watched enough of my lives. And then the next thing I did was just a really single quick coat of mermaid tail. Let me tell you where I'm headed with this as we're working on this project. So one of my favorite Dixie Bell decoupage rice papers is the colorful tiles. I've used this a couple times. And I thought, what a cool way to, I really wanted to decorate the inside and I couldn't figure out what to do with it. Probably a couple days went by and I finally figured out I, I definitely want to do something like a rice paper. And then it started occurring, occurring to me that if I cut the paper, this is already cut to size. I didn't want to necessarily do that live. That I could probably slide this in there and it almost fits perfectly like I tiled the inside. How cool is that? So that's where we're headed. I'm going to put this on in a little bit. Uh, but we're going to get there. And one of the things I use for color inspiration is if you look close enough, some of the corners have almost distressing or ruggedness and it looks like muscadine wine. And then there's a lot of pop of yellow. So I'm going to use muscadine wine and kernel mustard and those colors should be showing across the bottom. You'll see those two colors in here. And so the, I'd like to do a little bit of what I would consider a faux distressing technique on this project. And I'm going to do that with you tonight. And the other thing I do have handy is Dixie Bell's clear coat. That's what I'm going to use for the decoupage paper that works fantastic. So we'll have that handy as well. Now I'm not going to focus on any color. I'm, gonna let, I'm just going to put uh, decoupage paper right on the gray boss. I got a little sloppy, you can see in there, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's focus on paint and technique. Now this next step, I will tell you that I had a little bit, um, I'm a little up in the air, so this is kind of a trial and error with you guys live tonight, and I'm okay with doing that. And that is, do I want to wash, just do a wash? Do I want to loosely paint? If you watched my live last week, no, two weeks ago, where I painted the Singer sewing machine boxes, you can now see that on YouTube, by the way. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just check out Bowtie Treasures on YouTube. That'd be fantastic. So I could do a, a spray it and do it really wet. I could do a dry brush where I just painted on really thick. And I think what I'd like to do is almost treat it somewhat of a, a um, whitewash or a wash. Uh, what I mean by that is I want the color to go into, I want it to be on there, but I don't want it to be so thick that I'm hiding mermaid tail. So that's kind of the vision of where we're going. Let's just see how it's going to work. And I really would like, if it doesn't look right, I'm going to wipe most of it off, but I really want that muscadine wine in the cracks and in this. So in order for me to wipe this off, the best thing to do is to give it a little bit of a mist. But I want to paint it on. So again, I didn't try this out. We're going to figure it out together. And uh, weed pattern. Donna, thank you very much. Weed pattern is very correct. Now, I may forget about the bottom, and if I do, that's okay. So I'm going to really push this in. But I also want to use muscadine wine as a faux distressing. I'm really having to push this in there 
because there's not a lot of room. But I don't want to paint so much of the rest of it. So I'm just going to get it on there. I am painting this onto a wet surface so I can wipe it off. If you don't miss that, it's going to be very hard to wipe it off. It's going to want to start drying pretty quick. That's why I keep my mister bottle handy. Okay, this is, this is working out. I'll move my rag around. So I don't want to totally remove all of the muscadine wine. I just want it there a little bit. So you can see how it's kind of on there. It gives it a little bit of a rustic feel. It's not so fresh and clean. And look how it really stayed in that, that wheat pattern, how cool. And that color again is going to really work well for our project. So I'm gonna move this around I, and we'll do the sides. First thing we're gonna do is mist it. There looks like there's a lot of pitting in here. And when I say that it either was I'm guessing it's kind of faux. Let me bring you in, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Do you see it there? So some of that should come out in the finish. Bring it a little closer. So mist and do your magic. So you are kind of working a little quickly here. Remove as much of this as you want. Now you could also, you know, if you're into distressing, you could sand, let this dry a little bit and sand it. Another option you could do is you also could scrape it off with maybe a scraper. But I kind of like this hand more natural. Don't want to get on the side too much. That's a disadvantage of what I just did. That's okay. So I'm trying not to wipe it off too much. The key is to be somewhat consistent to the rest of the piece. So just something like that. Remember, we're working with steps here. Now these painter triangles are okay, but keep in mind that sometimes depending on the project you're working on, the tip can leave dents in the bottom of your project. So you can, you may start seeing some divots. So just be careful. And if you are using this and putting a lot of weight I've had it put some dents in some projects and I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. Misting bottle. Get in there. You see how I'm focusing on the wheat pattern. I knew you guys would help me with this, but didn't even think about wheat, but how cool is that? And again, I don't know if it was used for gardening or just toolbox or just, but this is kind of the size that I would use it for gardening tools. I think it's kind of cool. I actually thought it would be fun. Not that I'm going to do it, but I thought it'd be kind of a cool um, Easter basket. I know it's a little rectangular, but you know, you can do a lot of, maybe, maybe an Easter basket for an older child that, or I don't know. Just thinking out loud, right? I'm using a slightly wet rag, so that's one reason why this is easy to do. Remember, in order for this to be faux distressing, we're gonna need some faux distressing, but I need to build my layers first. Donna says, I don't know why manufacturers did that wooden warm look character I guess I really do think this was uh, somewhat handmade only because it's been unless maybe it was a kit and the person who put your initials on it just did that after they assembled the kit that could be it I will tell you this um, all I know is that I had this piece for sale in my booth as raw as the wood and nobody bought it so we're giving it new hope and new life and uh, but you can usually get these kind of things at like a, um, state sales garage sales goodwill so they're great little fun experimental projects 
you can see I'm getting on the side. My rag's getting, because I'm just wiping off so much paint, my rag's getting a little extra. I'm not stressing overlapping because it's part of the, I keep knocking those things off. So don't stress over how it's coming out. It doesn't need to be perfect. It, need to look, it needs to look worn and old. If not, you're kind of missing the faux distressing concept, right? I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. So now we need to work on the inside. And this is gonna be a little tough to get on camera. Let me see if I can do that. Probably just put it on the side. There we go. That allowed me to mist in there really well. Here I am experimenting on live, live Facebook. The fun part, if I mess up, you guys get to see me do it. But I try not to ever admit that I'm messing up. <laughs> I probably would never tell you I just messed up. I can think of it in one hand how many times I've maybe admitted messing up. It's just, this is just really part of the fun of being creative. And so you can see how I left even some of the muscadine wine in the corners. In fact, I think you can almost even treat it on purpose, like you're waxing. See, I'm using the rag to kind of dab, dab that a little bit. One more side, and I think we should have this thing muscadine wine stained. I do have, the other color that I have on my list is Colonel Mustard. But I don't want to do this with Colonel Mustard, and I'll show you in a minute what I'm gonna, what I have planned for Colonel Mustard. Okay, look at my rag; it's getting, getting crazy. Oops, I just stuck my hand on the top. Oh, you know what? That's from the other side when I laid it down. Anything you can do at this point on this kind of technique to add texture. And one of the accidental things that's happening is the table surface is giving it texture. So you have to, you may have to be more careful depending on your project. Okay, so you can look at, see how I'm talking about how I can't really get in there with my rag. It's perfect. I'm just going to leave it. Wiping off some of the side. A little too much red. My handprint. It's still, my, my rag's still wet enough to kind of, and even if I wanted to, I can come back with the rag again and give it a little bit more ridges. That's cool. So we're just really knocking the newness out of, out of it. This side's still a little too red. If by chance it's too much, I like to use my rag that I consider my eraser. I can always come back and repaint it, but that, yeah, I kind of knocked it down, that's better. So I'm just looking for little places that I feel like I need to edit some more. Again, let's go ahead and do the bottom. I'm not sure why I'm doing the bottom. I guess I could have left that wood, but I felt like it, I was good. I felt like I should just do that, right? Go with your gut. If you want to do it, do it. See how I misted it, mist, misted it? it? This week on Dixie Bell Live, we will be speaking proper grammar. Now you'll observe Aaron as he missed it a bit. Don't, you can't tell me you, you don't have the same problem in your studio. Okay, that looks good. Look around all the sides and make sure I didn't miss anything crazy. I did just drop my muscadine wine lid in the bucket of water. Okay, I'm going to set that down just for a second. Let's be done with this rag. Put that to the side. This is in a situation where maybe some gloves would help if you don't want to have such messy hands. So let me just wipe those off. Let's 
work on, see how it worked. This is mu uh, Colonel Mustard. You can use any color that you want. The main reason I chose it was because I felt like it, it had a lot of the colors that were on the decoupage paper. You can manually distress if you want, but I'm gonna faux distress. Faux distress is basically, I'm gonna add some layers. Uh, another way of looking at this is almost like I'm doing boho style. So if you need to learn a little bit of a boho, which I have on my YouTube channel, um, this would be kind of in the same category. So I've got a couple utensils here. You could use a scraper. I couldn't find mine today. I don't know what happened to it, but I thought, you know what? I could use the thing, Dixie Bell's thingamajig. It's got a lot of different sizes and shapes too. That's why there's so many different angles. Okay, then now we caught our breath. Let's come back in. Let me show you how I think this would be cool to try this. Cool to try, we're gonna try it. So I'm just gonna dip the thingamajig in there. And all I'm gonna do is just almost like a side pattern. Just kind of touch it every once in a while, get an edge. You can little dabs, large dabs. Now the other thing you can do, I'm gonna wipe some of that off, is this may not be the best tool, but you can also, let's do this. I'm gonna come in there with just a touch and I'm gonna scrape. So you can do a little bit of scraping. You could go over an area you've already done and, un, you know, and, and scrape it. Don't really like that so much. You don't really have a lot of erasability here per se. Oops. But I do have a, another wet rag. I'm just gonna wipe that off. So just, exp this could be done. I could experiment on my table. I can experiment here. So I'm just kind of keeping all the lines horizontal. And some you could actually drag. Does that make sense? So you're just kind of creating this illusion that it's been distressed. How much to do, again, there's that corner. How much you should do is totally up to you and the amount of distressing that you would like. You can use a finger, you can use a scraper. So this is like a little palette uh, artist mixer. You can use this as well. I don't know if you can hear that or not. You see how it gets you just a di different little, more of a rounded pattern. And it just depends on the kind of pattern that you want. You can go flat and kind of wiggle it. I'm liking that a lot. Now I would suggest that once you start with the, your tools, then keep looking for opportunities for those particular tools because you're gonna get more of a consistent unified look if you do that. But some things are happening here. We have a mermaid tail with its complement colors. So color harmony, all those other good fun words, they're all happening here because they're coming together. So I'm literally just experimenting. Probably another color that I would say I would use with this group that I didn't pull out tonight is maybe something like coffee bean or chocolate. It's a nice dark, it would be a really nice dark distressing color to try. And I'm just playing with different points of my thingamajig. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the mixer. Maybe just wiggle some distressing. So you do not have to use a light color. These are all optional colors for you to try on your project. But this little magic right here is taking my project from being clean or just raw wood to being, it just looks like it's been sitting out in the weather for a really long time. Now 
Now you can do this technique on large pieces of furniture, small furniture. This is a great way to experiment your technique a little bit before you jump into a large project. Don't forget here in a couple minutes, I'm gonna show you another Dixie Bell rice paper on a kind of a fun project. I'm just looking for places to drag and highlight. Hopefully we have enough time for everything because I still want to put on Dixie Bell's rice paper on here. So again, just looking for any more areas I want to hit. It looks like I waxed it with red wax. I don't do wax much at all. So I can't actually even tell you if there is such a thing. But if you are into waxing or that look, I just waxed it with muscadine wine. So how cool. So just touching randomly. As I mentioned a while ago, you could come back in and maybe do some actual distressing, bringing some of the wood tones in. That would also be kind of cool. But and notice again how all the colors work. Everything's working well. So I chose my colors based on my rice paper. So if you're going to do a rice paper, I do recommend you consider doing that. Now I didn't paint in the middle, which was really good for us because, oh, you know what? I forgot one more thing. You know how I said coffee bean or chocolate? You could come in here with your brush and muscadine wine and maybe just do some stippling. Another way to faux distress. I'm just using the edge of the brush. We talked about the wormholes earlier. So I'm just kind of dabbing in almost some faux distressing. This is another cool way to faux distress. almost forgot about this. So just dab it. And so those little dots are adding more texture. You see them on the sides. And you just do this to taste. Could be any color. This looks like it's got a little bit more of a story to tell than the, the one I had earlier. If you ever go too far with this, not saying I have, you can always come back with mermaid tail and counter some of that. And just again, keep adding layers. So that's just another way of bringing in some texture on your project. Let's work on the inside. I don't know if it's gonna to be too tricky, but we're gonna find out pretty quick. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to have is Dixie Bell's clear coats. I use Dixie Bell's clear coat satin. I think I'm gonna use a one inch brush because I want to work quickly. As soon as you start applying this, you know, it's going to want to start setting. So let's see how I can best. Now, of course, I didn't do any of the distressing on the bottom, by the way, but I don't think that's okay. It hasn't seen as much light of day. So let's, um, let's jump in here. So I'm just working quickly to get the clear coat. Now, if I paint, if I get clear coat on some of my paint, it's okay, because I am gonna clear coat that eventually anyway. So I don't have to be super refined here. And you can imagine without seeing every stroke I'm doing that my goal right now is just get it on there, work quickly because it's gonna start drying on me. And that's when I, I could use a, lar a bigger brush than this, but at some point I just can't get in there. You can, I will tell you that depending on the rice paper you choose, it is a good idea to paint the surface that's going to get the rice paper close to the base color or main color of your rice paper. In other words, if it's, because some of the rice paper can be very trans, translucent. And if you paint it sloppy like I did on the inside, it's gonna show through. Now I speak from experience that the Colorful Tiles has a lot of design and pattern to it that you shouldn't see through it too much, but even if it does, it's just gonna go with my faux distressing look. So just be careful that you understand that 
whatever you have underneath may show through on some of your finishes. Okay, you remember I pre-cut this from a sheet of colorful tiles? So I'm working quickly now to get it in there. Trying to somewhat center this, knowing that it's not gonna be perfect. There's no, you know what? There's no perfect way of doing this. There's probably a good way and a not so good way. We're gonna go with the okay way. Hopefully I cut it. I did a dry run, but this would be a good time to have something like um, Tell you what, let me do. I'm gonna use my thingamajig so that I can kind of, I wanna establish that corner in there and the thingamajig is nice and soft. So it's allowing me to kind of wedge that decoupage paper in there. I apologize if my head's getting in the way. But I like how this, oh, I keep lifting it up, what am I doing? I'm not being, I might slow down. There we go. You also have to, I will tell you that you almost have to be somewhat willing to have a little bit of wrinkle if you would like to have a perfect, if you, if you stress over wrinkles, then you're gonna need a little bit more time to breathe and do it right. I just always find that I get a little bit of wrinkle and I've never been dissatisfied with that. It just kind of always gone with my rice paper really well. So I'm pushing it in there really nice. I want to get a good corner. Now, if I get to the point now where I need to put a little bit more, you know how we talked about moving quickly, I might need to go back at this point because I've kind of passed the quickly point and to put a little bit extra more, extra more, oh my word. A little bit extra top coat on the edges where it might be drying. And you, you're you gonna help yourself out there. Now it's getting a little bit of a bind near the top because I've torqued it so much. Just do what you gotta do. Remember this is a gardening toolbox. So if it's perfect, it's probably the wrong type of product. like this is not a jewelry box so if you rip your paper a little bit if it's wrinkled give yourself a break I think we did pretty good I also am expecting friends that um, my paper is gonna be a little short and I have planned to go back with a little bit of paint and touch up over the paper okay so now I'm putting a coat of top coat over the rice paper. This will give you a little bit more workability from a standpoint that the liquid, the moisture from the top coat will help you smooth out. I'm not saying necessarily get rid of the wrinkles, but one, protect, but two, help make sure that that rice paper is set. So give it a good coat. I, I'm not going to define how much coat, or, you know, liberal versus sloppy. Um, I would smooth it out after you apply it. Because you don't want globs of top coat on there. So give once you apply it, just give it a quick smoothing out. What do y'all think about this combination? I'm curious. We could still be friends if you don't like it. But this is a great way just to stretch your imagination, your creativity, to pick a rice paper, dictate the colors based off the paper, and just roll with it. I'm not a visionary stager kind of guy. I mean, I can make things look nice, but 
Someone could really make this stage even better than I could. All right, let me tighten that up. We're doing great on time. I mean, we've done this in 30 minutes. So there you go. I think that works well. What I was saying while I go, look at the side. If you look closely, you can see some gray boss up here. And so all I really need to do now is come back in there, put a little paint on it and clean that up. But I can do that after, after a while. I don't have to do that right now, but just touch it up. Um, I also would love to come back. So let's do it. Uh, where did my brush go? What I can do is even take like your muscadine wine and your yellow and even distress over some of this tile. I think that would be cool. It has a very um, southwest, this kind of southern southwest vibe. I really like it a lot. What do y'all think? Quite the transformation, right? I mean, if you think about it compared to earlier, it was it was okay. Tired, plain. Now it's pretty amazing. So I like where we're at. All right. Well, if you're watching on replay, thank you so much for watching. And all of you that stick with me throughout the, the show tonight, you're awesome. I hope you have a good week. Stay, stay creative, do something awesome. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron here at Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thanks so much, we'll see you later. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.